Watford were certainly the favourites. But it's Wigan who are in fine voice now. They call for some fresh legs. Paul Jewell, yet another from the Anfield stable. Herlock. Oh, it would have meant so much to Brentford had he been able to keep it down. That could have been interesting, Martin, if that had been a goal. Uh, we could have been in for extra time and we wouldn't have complained. It's been such a good game, we could sit here all afternoon. Absolutely right. But Mike Newell has done his job. Paul Jewell with five minutes left just to charge around up front and give Wigan a way forward. Mumakari was talking of the resolve of the northern teams. Well, we've seen that aplenty from Wigan Athletic. But maybe in another scare here. Gary Phillips is in the Wigan half. Castles to take the free kick. Wignall is there. Kamara coming in from the back. And Cribbley only as far as Millen. Roberts. And the best Brentford can do is a corner. Taken by Roberts. And Barrow again covering that space at the near post, making sure that Brentford couldn't fill it. Salmon, two minutes remain. Everything in front of Terry Bullivant. Herlock, no one has toiled harder in midfield, but Wigan have matched him. Here's Castles. Perhaps before the game, the one man that Wigan really we're concerned about, along with Roberts. And Kelly has been so mature in his midfield performance for a 20-year-old. I'm sure, Lou, you'd like to have some of these Wigan youngsters. I certainly would. I don't, I don't think it'd be possible. I think Brian would be holding on to them. Certainly one or two of them will make their way into the first division. I'm sure of that. The likes of David Lowe and Kevin Langley, maybe Steve Walsh. And they'll have learned so much from this experience too. Murray. Well, Murray again was fortunate that it came back to him. And no one could apply the finishing touch. Frank McClintock and John Doherty on their feet. Tremendous overlapping again from Jamie Murray. He got in earlier, if you remember. And just a little bit unfortunate that no one was at the back post to take advantage. And Frank and John Doherty quite rightly off their feet. They'll be disappointed. just want to keep the ball forward they're so close now Bullivant now Salmon and Langley obstructs the free kick as we move into stoppage time and it can only be consolation that Brentford are looking for Sees they get none and wanted to throw it initially to Graham Barrow who was the only player forward but like a good professional realised that he could use up a little bit more time by hanging on to it Roberts Wigan have kept him under control Brian Hamilton celebrates Wigan have done it the inaugural Great Roma Trophy is theirs and 
tremendous concern for the losers from the Wigan manager. What a double for this Lancashire town. Four weeks ago, the rugby league team came here and won their final. And now Wigan Athletic have their day. Colin Methven, the captain, so sure at the back. Keith Castles, scenes of desolation in defeat that we've seen so often at other major finals here. And scenes of celebration. John Butler, the unlucky one, on the pitch to congratulate his Wigan teammates. Robbie Cook, who probably scored the goal of the match, generous in defeat. So too Chris, Chris Kamara. But Lou, for third and fourth division football, an absolutely marvellous day. It's been tremendous, Mark, and it's been one of the biggest successes I can think of, apart from the four goals, which we all enjoy. We've had a 65-year-old trainer with Brentford, a 34-year-old goalkeeper with Wigan, a 17-year-old kid. Uh, all signs for a tremendous future for all players of all ages and all people connected with football, to know that you can come back here one day because of the freight of a competition. So it's the moment now when the teams gather together, waiting as the losers will go up first. Brentford led by Terry Hurlock. Well, it's been a gallant effort from Frank McClintock's side, not the first favourites to perish here at Wembley. Terry Herlock, who lives in the very road where Griffin Park is, Braemar Road. A Brentford man through and through now. The loser's mementos presented by Elton John. Jamie Murray, who had a fine match. Bob Booker. Graham Kelly, the secretary of the Football League there on the right. But it wasn't their day. Chris Kamara, Terry Bullivant, who came on in the second half. And George Torrance, the other substitute, who wasn't used. But here come Wigan. And Colin Methven, who used to go down the pits in Scotland before Wigan gave him the chance of full-time football, now goes up the steps to the Royal Box, proudly at the head of the Wigan athletic team. On the left, Brian Heathcote, the Wigan chairman. They didn't dare contemplate victory, really, when they came here. It was so much of a thrill to even be here. But the Freight Rover Trophy, in its inaugural year, goes to Wigan Athletic. Beautifully designed trophy it is too. You might not have heard of it before today, but I promise you that this fixture will become a part of the football calendar. Roy Tunks, a winner at Wembley. Tony Kelly, a goal scorer as well. Warren Aspinall, here at 17, so many players go through their careers without ever playing on the hallowed turf. Steve Walsh. Kevin Langley, Mike Newell, each in turn, the moment where they hold it aloft. David Lowe there, Paul Jewell, Barry Knowles, who didn't know he was playing until this week, deputising for John Butler, Alex Cribbley, and Graham Barrow, who toiled away up front, got some pretty rough treatment at times. Can you appreciate this moment as a player, Lou? You've been through it. Well, it's, it's the greatest moment you can experience. Uh, unfortunately for the Brentford lads, that walk up the terrace and firstly is, is something you don't want to experience. And I've done that. I've done it when we played Southampton. It wasn't very nice. But when you walk up as a winner, uh, it's a day you'll never forget. And it's a day I'll never forget here, funny enough, because the atmosphere has been tremendous. It's been a sporting occasion. The fans, winners and losers, have behaved impeccably. And it's been a pleasure and a privilege to have been here. And today, football badly needed. And 
the supporters of these two third division clubs and the players as well are to be highly commended on providing it for us. just organizing the lap of honor Tony Kelly there in the hat who was disappointed he's an Everton fan and he wanted to come down here to watch the FA Cup final but because Wigan had their Freight Rover Trophy Northern Area final the following Monday the players weren't allowed to go but he's come here now and played his part. Last time we spoke, it was just as you got to Wembley. To get there and to score a goal on the famous pitch, how does that feel? I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Couldn't believe it. I knew Graham would hold it off and hold it well. I just got it off him and put it away. Sorry for the goalie like, but I knew it was a goal as soon as you hit it. Right, it was the fastest you moved all day when you'd seen it go in? I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Mike, I think uh, there have been one or two questions asked about the first goal, about the, a bit of a handy goal in more ways than one. What's your version of it? What you mean, Andley? Well, it did look a little bit no, like that. No, I don't think so. I think I just got in front of him, lucky enough, with my chest, and uh, bounced nice for me. First time, and uh, put it away. Very pleased with it. There was certainly a lot of protests from Brentford about it, as though, well, yeah. our pitchers, it looked in our pitchers as though you did handle. Well, you, you're always going to uh, protest against a goal at Wembley if you think it's a bit doubtful, because uh, it's such a bad place to, to go behind, you know? And, uh, I'm just delighted the referee gave it. Brian, many congratulations. You must be very proud of your players. Yes, I am. I thought they worked very hard. It was a very hot day uh, in the season, and the pitch was very firm. So, yeah, I'm very pleased with them. They deserved everything they got. Saying all that, I thought Brentford played very well, made it a very good cup tie, and also the fans, terrific. Really good. Almost 40,000, the crowd. I was very pleased. I mean, I'm pleased for everybody. People who try to organise a competition or who actively organised it. And there's been a lot of work put in. And I just hope that this is the start of a very good competition for third and fourth division clubs. What did you say to your players before the game? Because I think a lot of people made Brentford favourites. Well, I think that uh, we didn't really need to do anything for them. I mean, I told them it was Christmas Day and their birthday all rolled under one. They play in Wembley, marvellous occasion, just go and win the match. And they did just that. They were marvellous. Were you worried at 2-1? Well, I worried right until the final whistle. But at the same time, I thought well, we controlled the game fairly well. and. Uh, I thought we paced ourselves quite well throughout because they're only, they're, like I say, nine of that team are under 21. It was a very hot day and Wembley's a big pitch and I thought that they, you know, paced themselves from start to finish and, you know, they'd be wiser for it all now. A lot wiser. A little celebration tonight, do you think? I think we will uh, indulge in a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, no, we're looking forward to it. It'll be a smashing night. Obviously, we're going to have a good night anyway because the lads have worked hard. They deserve their end of season and... Uh, that is just icing on the cake, and I'm pleased for everybody. The directors who have helped me a lot, the supporters who have been magnificent, and especially the players, and also the backroom staff. Really nice day.
Well, I've been lucky enough to go all over the world covering all sorts of football competitions, but I must say that I've really enjoyed helping bring to you this Freight Rover trophy. I'm sure it has a big part to play in the future of our national game, and for the third and fourth division clubs, it does give a special incentive now as they start next season. We leave you then with the happiest men of all, the men from Wigan Athletic who've come here to Wembley and won for the first time the Freight Rover trophy. It's one for Newell to fight for, and Millen misjudges, and Newell used the hand, surely. Oh, it's a goal given, it is. to Barrow, and to Kelly, 2-0, here's Murray, he waiting for the cross if he can provide it, Cook is one, typical Robbie Cook goal, and it's there, David Lowe, put the Freight Rover trophy in its inaugural year, goes to Wigan Athletic.